Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Anina Collier. I'm the Dean of the Center for Creativity at Tulsa Community College. And we are so happy that you all are here for the Dare to Care Volunteer Recruitment Fair. We have so many amazing nonprofits with us here today. And whether you're watching it uh, here on the Zoom, on Facebook, or if this is being recorded and you're watching it in class, uh, we are so glad that you're here. And I'm really excited for you to learn more about about the work that all of these uh, different nonprofits are doing in our community. It's so important. Nonprofits fill in so many gaps and add so much to Tulsa. And uh, the employees work so hard. And so we really appreciate their time today uh, to tell us more about their organization's mission and what their specific uh, volunteer needs are. Each organization will have just a couple minutes to give you their elevator pitch of what their organization organization is and what their needs are. So we'll be moving through those really quickly. Uh, but before we uh, introduce our first organization, I want to introduce you to someone very important, especially if you are a TCC student, a Tulsa Chief student. Augie Valadez is our volunteer coordinator and he has some important information for you. Hi everyone, I'm Augie Valadez and I'm the volunteer coordinator for TCC. Um, I just wanted to quickly introduce myself, share a little bit about what I do, and we'll get on to the real stars of today. Um, I'm a part of the career services team here at TCC, and my main duties are to help students connect with volunteer opportunities in the community, as well as navigate the Give Pulse platform. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, Give Pulse is the volunteer platform TCC students use to track service hours. Um, and if you and also locate available opportunities in the community. Uh, a few of our organizations today do have gift post pages and I ask those organizations to share those in your presentations, if so. Uh, now, gift post does not show every opportunity in the area. A few organizations are not on the platform yet, uh, but you can still log hours with them and, and track and everything like that. If you are a community partner interested in joining the platform today, please let me know and I'd be happy to help you get started on there. Um, last thing is Tulsa Chief students are eligible to receive one hour for attending today's event. To get credit for this hour, please log your time on Give Pulse to the Dare to Care event. If you do not know how to log hours yet, please email me your TCC ID number to uh, volunteer at tulsacc.edu. That will be in the chat as well. Um, and I'd be happy to go over that and log that with you. Uh, so if you ever have any questions, just getting started, whether you're a community partner wanting to learn more about uh, TCC volunteering, or if you're a student learning how to get connected in the community, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Augie. And uh, whether you're watching this in a class or on your own time, um, you do, at TCC Tulsa Chief students do get that one hour of credit. So be sure to log that or email Augie if you have any problems. I'll give his email one more time, volunteer at tulsacc.edu. All right, we are gonna move right into hearing from all of our nonprofit partners that are here today. Super excited about that. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to put those in the chat and we will answer you in the chat or at the end um, if we don't get to it for some reason. So I told all my friends they have three minutes uh, max. And so if I have to jump in, I will, but we'll see how it goes. I'm so excited to introduce our first nonprofit partner, and that is Family and Children's Services, D. Harris. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much for having me today. And um, I appreciate it. Um, so I wanted to just tell you all a little bit about Family and Children's Services. Uh, we've been in Tulsa for a hundred years. So we've been the safety net provider for all these Tulsans for all that time. We help children, families, and individuals across the lifespan. Um, we're a nonprofit. And we have over 60 programs that help anything from behavioral health services to child abuse trauma services, women's justice services, we have parent relationship education, early childhood family support and family services. So as you can see, we help individuals across the lifespan and we also help people regardless of their income or insurance. So once again, we're the, we're the safety net provider for Tulsans who are struggling with challenges, depression, anxiety, all the way to um, mental health disorders. And 
We help about one in six Tulsans uh, within a network of seven offices. We're also embedded in schools, Head Start programs, the library bus station, jails, food distribution centers, because we want to go where our clients are. So you can see that, that we have a lot going on and a lot of our services are related with clients. So it's hard to volunteer at Family and Children's Services, but we do have one great place that you can volunteer and it's our thrift store. Our thrift store is located at 6th and Peoria and helps fund the gaps for those people that can't afford services. We like individuals to come and help and groups. So it's a great place to come with your friends. And we just need kids and, and, and volunteers to help with sort, hang, and tag clothing. Um, and this can be done anytime during the day, evenings, or weekends. So um, if you're interested in this volunteer opportunity, it's fun. The shopping's fun too afterwards. And um, I'll put the link to our website in the chat. And I appreciate um, all the individuals and groups that not only support family and children's services, but you're supporting individuals in your community that really need help. Thank you. That's awesome, Dee. I had no idea that your organization had been here for over 100 years and helped one in six Tulsans. That's amazing. So thank you so much for that overview. The thrift store sounds fun. Maybe you can even get a few treasures um, after your shift there. So thank you, Dee, with Family and Children's Services. Our next organization is Reading Partners, which I or, uh, volunteered with once for a year, and it was awesome. Lisa Flanagan, tell us all about Reading Partners. Yes, thank you so much for having us today. My name is Lissa and I'm with Reading Partners. Reading Partners is a national nonprofit organization that works with kindergarten through fourth grade students to help them with their reading skills. <clears throat> so our volunteers commit to just volunteering one hour per week and they work one on one with a student using lesson plans that we provide. So these lesson plans, they're scripted, they tell you exactly what to do and what to say. So no experience is needed. Um, you can just really jump right in and help support a student in learning to read. Um, we have both in person and virtual volunteer opportunities. So you could volunteer at one of our 23 school sites all around Tulsa. Um, or virtually online over Zoom, um, if that works better with your schedule. Our volunteer hours are Monday through Thursday from about 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., so you can kind of work it around your class schedule as well. Um, so if you're interested in learning more and just volunteering for one hour a week, you can find our listing on GivePulse, or you can go to readingpartners.org slash volunteer. Thank you so much, Lisa. And I will say you have some incredible data about how much Reading Partners helps individual students. I don't know if you have it off the top of your head um, and can share it, but it's really impressive. Yeah, so last year, 70% of all of our students met or exceeded their end of year literacy growth goals. So that is a huge accomplishment as we continue to combat the effects of COVID-19 on the education system. This year, we hope to serve 1,000 students with the help of 1,100 volunteers. So every volunteer is so appreciated and really needed. Uh, so we appreciate anyone's interest in our program. That's great. And it's nice, too, that you have the virtual option if transportation is a barrier for some reason or uh, you're high risk and need to stay home. So thank you, Lissa. Reading Partners, wonderful. Our next nonprofit is MODIS. Uh, and MODIS, let's see, Emily Kina from MODIS. Welcome. Hey, thank you so much. Yes, I'm Emily Kina. I'm the Director of Engagement at MODIS. We are a small nonprofit, unlike the other guys. <laughs> so we've got about 30 volunteers currently and like eight staff members. So we're five years old. Um, and what we do is we provide transportation. So we connect with other social services and make sure that their clients get to and from their appointment. Currently, we operate just within the Tulsa area, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So we have volunteer drivers who go out and drive their own car, go pick up these clients that are, we know a little bit about them, so they're not strangers. We've got some background information on them. Pick them up in your car and then drive them to their appointment, drop them off. It's about 15 minutes altogether. So it's a great volunteer opportunity for somebody, a lot of busy school, like homework and all that. If you just need to quickly get it in, 
to between school and work, we can do that for you. So volunteers just schedule their own rides. Um, we don't schedule it for you. So you have access to our ride calendar. You can go in and get that. Um, currently, our, we do have a qualification that you have to be at least 21 to drive and then have at least two years of driving experience and there's more. So we understand that not a lot of people qualify for that. So we also have a MODIS Delivers program, which is brand new. It's a pilot program that we started this year collaborating with Life Senior Services and Catholic Charities. And we make sure that individuals, senior adults who are transportation vulnerable are able to get groceries every week. So currently we're doing that on Saturdays between nine and noon. Um, we meet at Catholic Charities, pick up the food from there, and then we drive and disperse groceries all over, primarily North Tulsa, um, some in Broken Arrow there as well. So a lot of different opportunities. Modus is pretty cool. So check us out, go online, follow us. We're here. <laughs> Emily, that's great. And congratulations on launching that new program with those partnerships. That sounds so important. And the volunteer opportunities at Modus almost sound like the gig work of volunteers. So <laughs> you only have little snippets of time. Yeah, Modus we'll squeeze might, you in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Modus Thank might you. be your organization. Thank you so much, Emily. Our next organization is Pause for Pause. And Cindy looks like she has a little ambassador with her too. Welcome, Cindy. Hi, yes, I've got the best job ever because I get to work with Mrs. Agatha. She likes to be on Zoom meetings with me, although right now she wants to go away, which is fine. Um, Pause for Pause is a wonderful nonprofit that st was started about four years ago. Our mission is to provide emergency pet foster care to individuals experiencing homelessness, mental illness, and addiction. We will take care of their pets for them so they can get the treatment they need. Oftentimes, if you have one of those issues, you've already, you've alienated family or you don't have any family left, you have no one to care for your pet. And without that, oftentimes people will not get the mental health care, medical care or drug treatment, alcohol treatment they need. So that is what we do. Um, so mainly we don't have a location. Uh, so we we put people, our, all of our pets go into foster, they aren't like, um, boarded anywhere. They're in foster homes. So we're always looking for foster families. So if you have um, room for a pet, a short term, uh, we are short term. We don't, and we always give pets back to their owners. So usually it's anywhere from 30 days. Well, it could be just a few days. I took a cat home yesterday who whose owner was in for a medical um, detox. And um, so she was just with us about five days before I took her, her actual her dog back home to her. I'm taking a cat home today to a guy who's been in treatment and is getting out. And he's gonna be really excited to see his cat Nacho. Um, so we are financed through private donations and you can make a donation for that might be a way you can volunteer uh, through our website. And um, then we also have um, events that we host. We have trivia night coming up here pretty soon. We do need volunteers for our events. So our trivia night's gonna be on October 19th. So primarily we need foster families, um, supply collection. If you wanna donate dog food or dog dishes, uh, collars and leashes, we sometimes can use those kinds of things. Um, so I think that's, that about covers it for us. Thanks. Cindy, thank you so much. So if you love animals, this might be the nonprofit for you as a foster uh, family or helping in an event if you don't have the um, ability to, to foster right now. And we know so many people, they love their pets. And if they're delaying treatment because they don't have someone to care for their pets, that's where Paws for Paws comes in. So thank you so much. And we do spay, spay, neuter, and vaccinate all animals that come through our program. The owners have to agree to that. That's wonderful too. Oh, so important. Thank you so much, Cindy and Paws for Paws. Our next organization is Girl Scouts of Eastern Oklahoma. One of the most fun summer jobs I ever had was at a Girl Scout day camp. And Kay King is here to tell us about what is here in Eastern Oklahoma. Kay. Yeah, so of course we have camps and of course we're known for our cookies, but we actually do so much more than that. Um, let me just let you know about some of the awesome things we do. Um, we do badges, programs, activities, 
Um, we just actually launched one of our STEM programs. We um, I have a STEM strategist, Jamie Walton. The next Saturday, they're actually going to be at the Tulsa Maker Fair, and girls have built little robots um, that are going to be displayed at a Tulsa Maker Fair. We do cookies. We do um, all different kinds of things, but we cannot do that without the help of volunteers. You can get, you know, 100 girls together, but we can't do an activity. We can't do a program. We can't sell cookies without the help of an adult. Um, as much as we love girls to lead our organization, we are a girl-led organization. Um, adults really help drive us. Even if you are never a Girl Scout, never too late to join. Even if you are a male, never too late to join Girl Scouts. Um, we actually launched a really cool program this year called Man Enough for Girl Scouts, where we highlighted some awesome men in our community who are man enough to support Girl Scouts and our values. Um, we love Girl Scouts who come back and we love Girl Scouts who start at the age of 50. Um, so yeah, let me know if there's any other things you want to know. Very cool, Kay. Never too old or the wrong gender or gender identity to be a Girl Scout. I love it. That's great. Um, and more than just cookies, as good as the cookies are. Now I want a Thin Mint. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Never so. know. I can drop some off. <laughs> I'll be coming by your office later. Uh, so thank you so much to Kay and the Girl Scouts of Eastern Oklahoma. Next up is a community favorite, the Tulsa Zoo. They need volunteers too. And Susie Webb is here to tell us more. Susie, welcome. Susie, you are on mute. You know somebody had to do it. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Okay, perfect. I'm Susie from the Tulsa Zoo. Come join us for a wild place to volunteer. We have single day volunteers for upcoming events. That's where we take a lot of volunteers. Um, you don't need any training. You just come up, you show up, sign a waiver, and we will certainly put you to work. We have some upcoming events. Um, the Waltz on the Wild Side, which is September 16th. We have 100 spots to fill. Um, various things to do is to greet the guests, hand out water, hand out maps, kind of help people um, around the zoo. Another one of our upcoming events is Halloween, the last two weeks in October, the last two weekends in October. Um, we look for about 800 spots to fill, and we have three-hour shifts. Um, we need mascots, we need people um, handing out candy, we do fun things like um, the hay maze, we need attendance for the hay maze. Also, we have a, we take regular volunteers year round that assist, we start in guest services, that's where we start with our volunteers, um, and we are seven days a week from nine to five. So uh, I just want to say too, thank you for all the students for volunteering and supporting all these groups. Awesome, Susie, thank you so much. So every day, right? Any day that you're open, you need a volunteer pretty much, right? Correct, yes. Right, and okay, how cute would it be to work at Halloween and get to see all the kids and their little outfits and hand out candy? That sounds like a blast, frankly. And, and dressing up as mascots too, so that's a lot of fun. Yes, oh my gosh, yes. Well, Susie, thank you so much. That sounds like so many cool opportunities there at the zoo. So now our next organization is the John Hope Franklin Center for Reconciliation. Vanessa, please tell us about the incredible work your organization is doing in our community. Good morning, and thank you all for having me, having us rather. I just wanna say with the right support, young people, students, you're changing the world. And I have to admit, it's not easy seeing a problem so large and figuring out how to get out there and make a big impact with certain issues, especially what we have going on. But I think with a little determination, perseverance, courage, and compassion, you can really do anything that you want to do, right? The John O. Franklin Center is about connecting, learning, and growing. And some of the TCC interns that we've had have already helped us to do that. So we are here as a support organization for our students, right? 
So even though we're about uh, the history of Tulsa, we're about furthering those connections as Tulsans, as Oklahomans, as community members. We have an annual symposium, we have an annual dinner, and the volunteers are an integral part of how this little machine works because as the person, uh, the director of Outreach and Alliance, I do little stuff. It's the volunteers that I work with that really do the big, the, the big carry. And we want to maintain that relationship and bring in as many as we possibly can. So we've had over 300 volunteers in, in our existence here, in our 13 year existence. So we are proud to partner with you guys we want to enhance your experience as a student, and we want to bring you on in and keep you forever, <laughs> forever. So thank you for having us. That's great, Vanessa, thank you. And I mean, you're sharing those words really, um, I think just make us all feel connected just hearing from you. So I can see how you would be helping to lead your organization and your volunteers to, to help uh, connect with connection and understanding here in Tulsa. So John Hope Franklin Center for Reconciliation uh, events, as well as other volunteer needs, over 300 volunteers in 13 years, and you can be one of them. So thank you so much, Vanessa. We appreciate hearing from you. Uh, our next organization is Up With Trees. Who doesn't like trees, right? Taylor Malone, tell us more about what your organization needs. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having us. I am Taylor with Up With Trees. Our office is located downtown at 11th and Boston, so just down the street from the Metro campus. Uh, we are a tree planting, maintenance, and education nonprofit. We've been around since 1976. Currently, we're in our maintenance season, so we're pretty focused on watering trees, weeding, mulching. So one of the most popular opportunities for TCC students is to come into our sign shop. So those wooden signs you see across the city, they're much bigger in person and you can come into our shop and we provide the training and the paint and you guys will often have the shop to yourself. So it's some volunteers think it's pretty therapeutic. Um, you can turn on the music down there and just enjoy yourself. But of course, tree planting is the most fun way to get involved. And that season starts in October, October to March. We have big Saturday plantings each weekend that begin at 9 a.m. We'd love to have you. You can get plugged in easiest by going to our website upwithtrees.org and you'll see the volunteer tab where you can either just fill out a volunteer interest form or get plugged into our volunteer platform. But I also wanna plug a program each February, all four Saturdays in February is our citizen forester program. If you wanna learn how to ID trees, how to plant, how to prune, how to uh, identify pests and diseases. This is a great program for you and a way to get um, 16 hours under your belt. So would love to have you there. And then the last thing I wanna plug, if you wanna knock out eight hours in a day, you can volunteer with our operations crew. And if you're an uh, early riser, they start 645, the day ends at 345. And it's a great way to just get your hands dirty and involved in the community and really help us out um, either in maintenance season or planting season. So thank you, we would love to have you. Awesome, Taylor, thank you so much. And Citizen Forester, that just sounds awesome, right? Like I wanna sign up just so I can say I'm a Citizen Forester, but really cool opportunities, especially for um, knocking out eight to 16 hours. So thank you so much, Taylor. And up with trees, okay, and our next, uh, organization, Food Bank of Eastern Oklahoma. Teresa is joining us from her car because there is a lot of construction going on. So thank you so much uh, for toughing it out. Teresa, tell us what is going on at the Food Bank of Eastern Oklahoma. Well, thank you for having us today. Uh, my name is Teresa with the Food Bank of Eastern Oklahoma, and we do have exciting news. We are both sides of our building. So uh, we are growing, so we will be able to accommodate, hopefully sometime next year, up to 150 volunteers per each shift. Our shifts are Monday through uh, Saturday from nine to noon and one to three. Uh, and we have a Tuesday through Thursday evening shift from six to eight. Uh, we are on the Give Pulse site, and we also still need to uh, use our volunteer hub site to register. 
but when we get the 150 uh, volunteer spaces available, it is going to be so much easier. Right now, we are struggling. Uh, we need our volunteers desperately in our sorting and packing room. Uh, what we do there is uh, sort and pack uh, donated products. Uh, we box, bag, and then we have them ready for our 450 plus partner agencies and uh, partners uh, to be able to order them for us, from us. So uh, we need our volunteers desperately, but we are down to being able to only have 15 at a time due to the uh, expansion. So we're doing makeshift things to make it happen. Without our volunteers, we could not do it. Our TCC volunteers are awesome. They usually save us every day uh, by coming and uh, we, we couldn't do it without them. I, I actually, our volunteer basis helps save over a million dollars per year in operating costs. So we need all of you wonderful volunteers. So I hope you'll consider the food bank. Thank you. That's amazing. Volunteers are saving the food bank over a million dollars a year. And congratulations on the expansion. I know that there has been so much increased uh, need from the food bank during the pandemic and um, it's after continued aftermath. So thank you for everything you're doing to make sure that Tulsans get access to the food they need. Um, so plenty of opportunities there with the food bank. Thank you, Teresa. And our next organization, right up the road here on Lewis from Metro Campus, the Center for Individuals with Physical Challenges. Margie, tell us about what's going on at the center. Thank you, yes, hello everyone. I'm Margie with the center. We're located at 8th and Utica, right across from the Quick Trip. We provide adaptive recreation, exercise and fitness, and a lot of adaptive sport to our participants who all identify with a physical challenge. Um, our programming runs pretty much Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5, with special events on the weekends and in some evenings. We utilize volunteers throughout. So whether it's in adaptive recreation with our art studio, working with our art instructor through the classes, open studio, just helping provide uh, programming, interaction, supplies, just helping with the classes. In our fitness center, in our exercise classes, supporting the staff, interacting with members, just helping with the energy of the groups and a lot of adaptive sport opportunities, whether it's bocce, wheelchair softball, wheelchair tennis, uh, para power lifting. We're always looking for more spotters. So um, we welcome volunteer involvement throughout all of our programming. Uh, we do uh, request an initial contact so we can schedule that initial visit and do some on onboarding forms. We are on the Give Pulse um, site, uh, but you can contact me directly here at the center as well. So um, check us out and, and come visit. Thanks. Margie, thank you so much. And yes, thank you for correcting me. It's on Utica, not on Lewis. Um, so you like sports, art, general health. There's opportunities there at the center for you. You bet. you bet. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Margie. So our next organization, we have the dynamic duo of Scott and Tia from Meals on Wheels. Welcome, Scott and Tia. Thank you. Thanks for thank having you. us. Yeah, I, I'm Scott. And I'm Tia. <laughs> right. And we are with Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels has been serving the Tulsa metro area and community uh, for over 50 years now, since 1970. And uh, currently we're serving uh, about 1,800 of our neighbors throughout the Tulsa metro community. Uh, now that's uh, mostly in Tulsa, but that includes all the, the communities around Owasso to Glenpool, Bixby to uh, Sand Springs and Broken Arrow, of course, as well. And uh, one of our biggest needs, you know, first I'll tell you our five lines of service. The big show, as we like to call it, is our meal delivery, our weekly meal delivery. Now that's Monday through Friday, 11 to 1 is the time frame you choose to volunteer. So if you're, you have that time frame, and it's usually uh, you pick up the meals and you're done in about 50 minutes to an hour. Uh, but those meals are delivered Monday through Friday, 11 to 1. And uh, that that's the biggest thing we do that when you think of meals on wheels that is that's what you that's what you imagine it's what our motto is built around together we can deliver and we we can do it because of volunteers like you and uh we are on the give pulse uh 
uh, network as well. And uh, you can find us there. And, and of course, our info in the chat. But with meal delivery, there also comes um, PAWS. Now, PAWS stands for Pets Assisting in the Wellness of Seniors. Uh, and uh, the uh, third Saturday of every month, there's a volunteer opportunity to deliver pet food to our clients. And you drive a route just like you would for meal delivery. And that's from nine to noon on the third Saturday of the month. Uh, we have, uh, as well as uh, pause and meal delivery, we have wellness calls, uh, feeding our future, and home safety. And I'm going to let Tia talk about those. Okay, wellness calls. Um, our volunteers can sign up from uh, one day a week to seven days a week. Um, just calling in and checking in on a list of clients to make sure that they're doing okay, that they have food, which is the main thing, um, and just essentially being a companion. And, and then we have our home safety program, which our volunteers uh, provide like things like ramps so our clients can get in and out of their homes, doorbells, um, painting on house numbers, just small home improvement projects. And then Feed Our Future is for any, um, any of our middle to high school students that may be nutrition deficient. So we provide, provide snack bags for them. So um, our volunteer opportunities are abundant and come and join us. It's more than a meal. Do That's good, feel good. That's great. Thank you so much, Scott and Tia. I had no idea there were so many different initiatives run out of Meals on Wheels. So, uh, so many people you're serving in our community and so many opportunities. Thank you so much, Meals on Wheels, Scott and Tia. Thank you. Our, yes, thank you. Our next organization is Greenwood Rising Black Wall Street History Center. If you have not gone, you have to go. It's incredible. Um, and here to tell us more about volunteer needs is Phil Armstrong. Phil, welcome. Thank you, Anina, and uh, just want to say thank you for the opportunity to, uh, I guess, we're the newest kids on the block, to, as, as they say, and uh, we've only been open for one year. We actually just uh, acknowledged uh, the first full year of Green Rising being open and let you know some of uh, the demands that we're under at the, at the moment in terms of just volunteers to help with uh, even the most basic things, even just sitting at the front desk and to help answer phones and help uh, greet guests as they come in. Uh, our projections for Greenwood Rising, the History Center, for people to come see this information and experience it was 2,500 visitors, a projection of 2,500 visitors a month, a month to get about 30, 35,000 for the first year. After wrapping up our first year, we averaged 4,500 visitors every single month. That's even the slow months of December and January when it's cold outside. And for the month of June, we had 7,100 people walk through these doors. In July, just shy of 8,000. It has been an incredibly positive, overwhelming experience to see so many people come from all over the state, uh, all over the country. We've had about 45 of the 50 states of uh, people come to Greenwood, not just Greenwood Rising, but to come to Greenwood. And while they're here, they experience so much. We've had people come from Sweden, from Australia, uh, from uh, the executive director of the Holocaust Museum in Johannesburg, South Africa. It is amazing the people that come here. And when we do have, I can't guarantee that you'll see somebody like Regina King that's uh, was a part of the HBO Watchmen uh, segment uh, that really launched this inf information worldwide. But uh, we have had some incredible celebrities come through. Most recently, Tito Jackson of uh, Michael Jackson's brother. We had uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro come through when they were filming the, uh, the movie uh, in Pahuska. Uh, so there are many people that want to see this information and we need help. We need help after just to have people again, help our docents, give support, uh, be here for programs when we have that. So if you wanna be on the right side of history as we do this and continue to educate citizens about this history uh, and, and welcome to the Greenwood, we would love to have you here. And again, I say we're the newest kids on the block because we're all a part of this history, whether it be Greenwood Cultural Center, John Hope Franklin Center for Reconciliation, and the, and the wonderful John Hope, John Hope Franklin Park, Vernon AME Church, the uh, E.W. Woods Memorial, uh, the historic Greenwood Chamber. People can put on a pair of sneakers and literally spend the entire day walking around and absorbing this incredible history, and we're just a part of that now. So if you want to volunteer, please uh, sign up with us. Thank you and have a great day. 
That's awesome, Phil. And congratulations on what blowing your attendance projections out of the water. I mean, that's that's amazing. And yes, if you haven't been to Greenwood in the past year, just the energy uh, is just a beautiful thing to see. And so definitely go um, and check out Greenwood Rising and the other wonderful organizations uh, that make up Greenwood. So thank you so much, Phil. It's great to hear from you. Our next organization is Oklahomans for Equality and Jose Vega. Jose, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Manuel Vega. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I'm the program director here at the Dennis Arnold Equality Center, where it housed Oklahomans for Equality. We are seeking for volunteers and individuals or people who want to do internships here. <clears throat> who have a passion for equal rights in LGBTQ issues. Oklahoma is one of the states in the country that does not have a lot of LGBTQ protections. Uh, some that have just passed this year are trans students not being able to participate or be in the student act, um, sports that match their identity here in TPS schools. So we do a lot of activism, a lot of programming, support groups, learn how to advocate for LGBTQ rights at the Capitol, uh, programming, event planning, digital media. So if you are interested in, hey, I wanna become a social media manager, come. We, we are in need of social media uh, gurus for TikTok and all of these other uh, social media platforms. Or if you'd like to greet folks at the front desk answering the helpline where individuals call asking for what is an LGBTQ friendly business. Um, I need a roofer and I want to make sure that if they're coming to my house with rainbow flags with my partner's photos that it is a safe place. As well as if you're interested in event planning, we do a lot of pride bingos and we are organizing our uh, pride bingo calendar drag queen pride bingo. So come get your fabulous on here at the Dennis Arnold Equality Center. That's fantastic, Jose. Thank you so much for the work you're doing for equal rights in our community. And I know some of our students are social media gurus. So you want to put those skills to work. Oklahomans for Equality needs you. Thank you so much, Jose. And now our next organization is Big Brothers, Big Sisters. This one holds a special place in my heart because I was a big sister for a number of years uh, when I lived in the Oklahoma City area. Here to tell us more is Abby from Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to this. So my name is Abby Sutherland, and I am the Tulsa Area Director here at Big Brothers, Big Sisters. So most people have someone in their life that they know they can turn to for anything, someone that they can count on through it all. Um, and now it's your turn to be that person for a child. Uh, here at Big Brothers Big Sisters, we need volunteer mentors just like yourself to serve the littles in our program. Our littles come from various backgrounds and they always just need someone that they can rely on or maybe someone who can teach them socialization or help them with their academic performance or just exploring new interests. After filling out your application and participating in a casual interview, you'll be matched with a little who has similar interests as you and is in a pretty close proximity. We currently have three different programs that we offer that you can choose from, so that way it best fits your schedule and your lifestyle. We have our community-based program, which is where you hang out with your little a couple of times out in the community, like playing basketball, making a craft, or going to the library even. We also have our site-based option, which is where you'll spend about 30 minutes to an hour with a little at the Kendall Whittier Elementary School, just hanging out with them, maybe drawing a picture, eating lunch with them, something like that. Um, and we have a new guided program that is sports focused called Big League. And this program allows you to hang out with your little one time a month for approximately four hours, either going and watching the drillers or SC Tulsa or playing kickball or tennis or something like that. Um, this is a staff um, guided program, so the staff member will handle all communication with the family. So that makes it really flexible for students who maybe are worried about that time commitment. We currently have over 75 waiting littles that need a big, just like you. So please come be their mentor and sign up today at www.bigoklahoma.org. Thank you so much, Abby. 75 littles are just waiting for someone right now, and that might be you. And you don't have to think, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not a super 
rock star person. It's really about being a friend and showing up, right, Abby? Um, awesome. So big brothers, big sisters, lots of opportunities there. Uh, our last but certainly not least organization today is Goodwill Industries. And Victoria is here to tell us all about Goodwill. Welcome. That's fantastic, Victoria. I had no idea about the tax services that Goodwill was doing. So thank you for sharing that. And, you know, if you're a, a finance or business or math major, you might be like chomping at the bit to get some of these skills and trainings. But she said no experience required. So uh, if you want to learn more about how to do your own taxes, this is this can be a great way to get that training. Uh, Victoria, thank you so much. Goodwill. And um, that is the end of our nonprofit sessions. I want to congratulate everyone on sticking to the time limit. I didn't have to interrupt everyone, anyone, and I hate doing that. So yay to all of you for sticking with that time limit. Uh, Cindy has just dropped in the chat the list of registered agencies, so feel free to grab that. It's also on our website, centerforcreativitytulsa.com. Uh, don't forget, Augie Valadez is our volunteer coordinator. Students, if you have any um, issues with Give Pulse, you can go to volunteer at tulsacc.edu and then it's in the chat again thank you so much and then don't forget if you joined us a little bit late uh, Tulsa Chief students can get one volunteer hour by emailing your name and your T number to do you want it Augie to your email address or to this volunteer email address the volunteer one please okay great so same thing volunteer at tulsacc.edu whether you're watching as part of a class or later on your own time or right now you can still Still get that one hour credit. So thank you again to all of our amazing volunteer partners. I just almost get goosebumps hearing about all the things, all the great work and initiatives you're doing in our community. We appreciate you so much and we're excited uh, for our TCC students and for community members to show up and help make that work happen. Uh, thanks to everyone for um, attending today and we hope you have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>